so that you can reference it later. And we'll also be post posting it on our YouTube channel. So if you want to reference it or go back on anything, that resource will be there for you. Or if you're a student or parent in the room, you can share it with another parent or your student. Um, so definitely a great resource. So I did my introduction and now I will forward it over to Chan to take the floor and they will be leading our webinar today. Great. Hello, welcome everybody. Um, as you're signing in, I do have a set of slides which I will share because sometimes it's easier to follow along visually. So give me one second to pull those up. All right, so welcome to this webinar on what the residential learning communities or what we call uh, the RLCs are here at Santa Clara University. So I'm Dr. Chan Tai. I'm a faculty member in the Department of Communication, and I'm also the chair of our faculty director program here in the RLCs, which I will describe a little bit more as we dig into the slides. Um, I also have my email there, and I'll show it to you again at the end in case you have any questions um, about what I'm going to share with you today. So I planned probably about a 20 minute presentation and want to just leave as many uh, as much time for questions as possible. Um, I do have some questions that I've already logged from when you, some folks RSVP would and had questions. So I'll be sure to answer those when we get to the end. But if you do have a question, feel free to um, put it in the chat pod um, and or save it till the end when we'll just open up the floor. Okay, so who am I? So I use she, her, her um, pronouns, and I've been a faculty member in the communication department here at Santa Clara since 2016. So I'm entering my eighth year here. Uh, I have loved working here every minute of it. It's such a great environment. And I have also served as the faculty director in Cura RLC since 2019. So who the faculty director is, is we are a live-in faculty member in the RLCs. So every RLC, which is what we call our dorms here, uh, has a live-in faculty member. Um, and as we dig into the slides a little bit, I'll tell you more about who else lives in the RLCs with your students um, and also what the different roles that we play are in the RLCs. And so since this summer, I have taken over overseeing the faculty director program uh, in the RLCs. Um, and that's, you know, sort of who I am here representing um, in in this webinar today is, is in my role as chair of this faculty director program. So we are very intentional here at Santa Clara University. So everything we think about in terms of how we want to welcome and serve our students is with the hopes that we will help our students transition successfully, that they will have a successful four years here, and that they will graduate from Santa Clara University. So we are very proud to have a high retention rate. So students who start with us their freshman year, we have one of the highest percentages of graduation that students stay with us for four years, and it's in the 90-something percent, which is very, very unheard of in higher education. And so we like to believe that that is a result of all the intentionality that we put into all of our programs. So research does show that for students who are transitioning into college, the successful students are connected. What that means is they're connected to other students, they, they're joining clubs, they're engaged in maybe sports or club sports, um, they're involved in their classes, they do activities, and they participate in activities that we provide in the RLCs as well. Uh, the next key thing that leads to student success in college is they know how to cope with difficult situations. So inevitably, hardships will come up, whether it's, you know, not doing as well as they want in a class, or it might be a social something that comes up or something that happens at home. We know that students will um, face difficulties in their time at Santa Clara. So we try to promote um, helping students learn coping strategies. And we also really, really encourage students to seek help from all of the amazing resources we have on campus, um, which I will talk a little bit more about what we offer in the RLCs. And then lastly, sometimes students know these things exist, but they don't necessarily utilize the resources. And so again, we wanna emphasize to students that they know what the resources available to them are, and that we can create an environment where they aren't afraid to ask for help. And so the reason why I like 
engaging with parents is that when students show up, they're like so excited, but they're also really overwhelmed because everybody's giving them brand new information. So I love to connect with the parents because if your student contacts you or reaches out and says, OMG, I'm having a challenge with this, you might remember something from this webinar and say, I remember when I went to the webinar at the RLCs that in the RLC, there's, there's this person who can support you. And I have had that scenario happen to me before. So I love talking to parents and, and also sharing with you what it is that we offer in the RLCs. So you might be wondering, okay, they, she keeps saying this RLC thing. What is it? So an RLC is not just a typical dorm. So when I went to college, you know, it was, you, you got a room, you met your roommate, and that was kind of it. You went to classes and you kind of did your own thing. We are more than that. What an RLC is a really intentional living community where students obviously live in a residence hall together. But what we do at Santa Clara is that we create programs so that your students have an opportunity to learn more about the resources that I just talked about, as well as an opportunity to meet other people who might share their interests. One very, very key component of the RLC system at Santa Clara is this academic component. So we have a very intentional focus on the academic piece of a student's first and second year experience. And that's why we have faculty members like myself who live in the residence halls. So at some other universities, they might also have what's called a living learning uh, community where some of the, th the dorms have like a theme. So here our dorms do have themes, but on top of that, we have this whole orchestrated system of folks who live in the residence hall with your student to make sure that they can get connected to resources and to make sure that there is some connection between the academics, so things that they're doing in the classroom that are then connected back with what they're doing in the RLC. And I will explain a little bit more how we do that um, in the next few slides. So I like I mentioned, you know, I have colleagues in every of the other RLCs. We have eight of them here at Santa Clara. And the faculty director is the person who, who teaches in some department on campus, but a secondary role that we hold is that we are also live in, um, in the RLCs. And so the RLCs have an academic component that we, you know, sort of in our vision, in our mission, we try to um, implement. And the faculty director is the person who's implementing these things in the RLCs. So in general, goals of RLCs at any university who chooses to have an RLC is that we want to sort of integrate the academic and the extracurricular programming. So what that might mean is, you know, we might have a class that, you know, students are in, and then if students are in that class and they come from the same RLC, then we might actually host a program in the RLC that connects to that class. So we do things like um, the professor can come to our space and have a study session if there's gonna be exam the next day. So that's how we try to really um, integrate the academic experience into the RLC. But overall, the goals are, it's really to increase interaction between the students. So, you know, sometimes students will, will arrive and, you know, if they're a little bit more introverted or shy, like I was uh, when I was a student, they might have a hard time putting themselves out there and making friends. This way, if we are already creating programs, events, activities that they can attend, or sometimes we'll do things like we'll form a, an intramural sports team that's based out of our RLC. That way, we're just trying to facilitate many different opportunities for your student to potentially connect with and meet other students. Um, the other thing is to connect them to the different clubs, resources, programs that we have all over campus. Like I mentioned, you know, it's very overwhelming when the students first get here because everybody's giving them new information. They're in four classes. They're learning about their RLC. They're learning about all of the different services that we have on campus. So in the RLC, we also try to make sure that we are reminding students of all of these things that they may have heard about over the summer or in their first week at Santa Clara, but it's very easy to forget all these things. So we are always there as this constant reminder of the
the different resources and activities that are available. And really, we want to deepen how much they're integrated into the university community. So again, that if we show them what's available, then the hope would be that they join these clubs or they go to the student mass every week, whatever it is that appeals to your student, our hope is that we can find that thing for them or expose them to that thing so that they can find their own way there. Um, and if they need our help getting connected, that's definitely what we are here for. And so again, we are very intentional. There is a lot of research um, that supports all of these things that we are trying to do. Um, and we have had great success um, integrating all of these things into our RLCs, which is why we have a 90 something percent retention rate. So here specifically at Santa Clara University, the reason why we wanted to move towards this RLC model is because of the Jesuit principle of cura personalis. So because we are a Jesuit institution, we really hold true near and dear to our hearts this value of educating the whole person. So by having this RLC model where we're really in combining the academics and the extracurriculars, it allows us to better sort of, you know, support this mission of nurturing the whole person and really educating your student as a whole person. Um, and again, the, the key really for all of this is we want to create as many opportunities as possible for students to develop connections, whether that's connections with their fellow students, connections with their faculty, connections with the staff, um, connections with each other. You know, it's just we want to create as many opportunities for students to cultivate these hopefully long lasting and meaningful relationships um, that they will make here at Santa Clara. And, you know, we do see that we see students who come back, you know, for reunions and, oh, I met this person living in the RLCs my first year. And, and we really do see it that this very intentional way that we do the first year living experience um, does contribute to these lifelong relationships. And students develop relationships with the faculty members. So I've been in this program for four years and my first set of students just graduated. So when I started, I had some students who were freshmen living in Cura and you know I met up with them for coffee before they graduated. I've continued to check in on them, you know, in their four years here. So again, it's that idea of how do we help students build as many connections with as many people as possible uh, in their first and second years. So how do we do all of this? How do we function uh, as RLCs? So each RLC has a theme that the different faculty, professional staff from residence life and our student staff. So you might know them as resident assistants or RAs at Santa Clara here, we call them community facilitators, but we have a whole team of folks who live in the RLCs who create these programs and try to cultivate this experience for your student. And how we do that is we offer academic and extracurricular programs. So in every RLC, there's weekly programs that your student can attend. Sometimes there's social programs where it's like, come by, watch a movie and have some ice cream. Sometimes we've brought a campus resource into the hall to share what that resource is with students. So I was just on a call earlier this morning where we will be bringing the study abroad folks to come into the RLCs to give presentation about what students need to be thinking about if they want to incorporate study abroad as their experience at Santa Clara. Um, and we also just uh, do academic programs where, like I mentioned, we might bring a professor who's teaching a class connected to that RLC uh, to come in and they might hold a class in our space, do their office hours or hold a study session, things like that. And so every RLC kind of has a set of guidelines um, that they have to meet um, in order to make sure that all students who are living in all the RLCs have access to the same types of programming. But each RLC and each RLC team are sort of given the, the freedom to be as creative as possible in terms of the way that they implement these programs. So for example, you know, for my part of it, the academic, each faculty director who lives in the RLCs is required to put on at least two programs each quarter. Um, but how they do those programs is sort of up to them and up to their area of expertise. But we do have some guidelines that we put for all of the RLCs, but each faculty member, um, you know, can be creative. 
So this is just a quick snapshot of, of what the different RLCs are and what their themes are. This is also available uh, on the on-campus housing website, but we have eight RLCs. Um, each has a specific theme. And so then what we do is, you know, we work with the residence life team and the student staff to make sure that all of our programming connects to these themes um, as much as we can. So we have Alpha, uh, Cura, Sci-Fi, Da Vinci, and these are the buildings that they are in. Each of the RLCs kind of has like a, a different name. Usually the names are Latin, um, but this is the building in this column. And then this is the name of the RLC. And then I've also listed the faculty members who are who do my job um, in each of the RLCs here. So I won't read through all of this. Um, I uh, You can definitely look this information up on our website, but I just wanted to show you that, you know, each one does have a specific theme. Each, each uh, community has a different faculty member um, and then they are housed in different, um, in different residence halls. Okay, so here are the live-in staff. So these are all the folks who live in the RLC with your students. Um, so we have the resident director. That person comes from residence life and they generally manage the building, the operations of the building, and they manage our student staff, our community facilitators, who you might know as RAs at other universities. Um, our CFs are amazing. I mean, the, the amount of things that we ask of them is, is quite high, but they are so committed to this role. And really their main role is being your student's first point of contact. So if your student is ever confused about anything, needs help, support, their CF is their first point of contact. And how we do that here is um, each CF is assigned a certain number of students, usually around 30, and they basically, you know, are all grouped based on a floor that they live on, depending on their building, or a wing of the building that they live in, and that CF will be your student's point of contact for the entire year. Um, it can be I don't know how to register for my classes. What do I do? If the CF can't help them, the CF will direct them to someone in the building who can or to someone who's in a, in one of the organizations on campus, like our advising center, who can help them. Um, we also have a spirituality facilitator from campus ministry. This is a graduate student who helps students cultivate their spirituality in whatever way it is. It's uh, all faiths, it's all approaches to spirituality. So even though we are a Jesuit Catholic University, um, we are very open to all forms of spirituality and, and all faiths. Um, we also now have a new program where we have therapists who live in the residence halls as well, and they are able to offer drop-in therapy appointments that can be scheduled the same day. Um, and so that is a new member of the live-in staff that we just started this program last academic year. Um, and we learned a lot from having therapists um, for one year, and now we're tweaking the program a little bit just to make sure that we can serve students as the best as we can. And then there's me, the faculty member. Um, and so these are all folks who live in the residence halls with your students, and we are the ones who create all these programs um, to make sure your student stays connected and knows what's available on campus. So in terms of the role of the faculty director, we are here to support your students' academic success at Santa Clara. So we do things like create programs related to academics. We do programs like advising. We do programs um, you know, with study abroad, different kinds of academic resources on campus. Um, and one thing is we have a program called Linked Courses, which is on the next slide, which I will dive into. Um, and we're also able to share on and off campus resources with students. So sometimes students are like, I want to go off campus somewhere this weekend. Like, is there something I can do nearby? And faculty directors can say, oh, like there's this beautiful park walking distance that you can go to. So we're just an extra form of support for your student. And we can also meet with your students one on one. So if they're struggling um, in a class, you know, we can work through like study skills or time management with them. In fact, those are some of the workshops we hold is time management and how to, you know, just manage all of the things that students are doing their first year. So that's generally the role of the faculty director. Um, 
And so we also will host um, events that are advising focus. We can help students register for their classes. We'll set up an info session with the study abroad office to come into the residence halls. Um, and we will connect with the Career Center as well um, to ensure that if students need support, knowing you know when they can start applying for internships or get help building their resume. Again, our we I can't do all of that. It's not my area of expertise, but the the goal really is I'm bringing all of these amazing resources we have all over campus that can help your student do all of these things. And then the faculty directors are also required to do a community engagement program. So that's usually taking your a group of students from the RLC out into the community, whether that's like a cultural activity, going to a museum nearby, or something that's related to a class that they're taking. Um, that's you know part of the charge of, of what the faculty directors do. So then we have this really, really cool thing that takes forever to put together, but we have learned that it is really worth it. It's called our linked courses program. So all students, when they come to Santa Clara, have to take certain courses to meet their core requirements. Um, and one of these classes is their English one and two, which we call CTW or critical thinking and writing. And usually it's a two quarter sequence where the same students are in part one and part two. And so what we do here at Santa Clara is we link entire course sections to a specific RLC which means that in your students CTW1, whenever it is that they take that, at least 85% of the students in their CTW1 class also live in their same RLC. And again, this goes back to our intention of wanting to, to provide as many opportunities for students to connect with each other as possible. And so, you know, you're, it's your first day of college, you're going to your first class, maybe you don't know anybody. But when you get to your CTW class, the students will be informed that 85% that of the students are also in their RLC. So that gives them at least this like, oh, I do recognize that is the same person who I saw in my hallway last night. They're in this CTW as well because, oh, wow, like all these other students in this CTW class are also from my RLC. So this is something that we are really proud of. Uh, the faculty who teach these CTW1 classes, at one and two, love that we do this linkage. And so we have seen that this definitely um, leads to students feeling more connected. They're more engaged in the RLC because they know all the other students in the class are. So this is kind of one of the primary things that we do. And so sometimes it is the faculty member who lives in the hall who teaches some of these linked courses. But even when they're not, you know, I don't teach any linked courses in my own RLC, but I will reach out to the faculty who are teaching the linked courses. And sometimes I'll pop into their class. Sometimes when they come teach their class in the hall, I'll show up and we'll, you know, sort of collaborate and coordinate together so that we can do a presentation together. So again, that's, you know, what we mean when we say the academics are integrated into the RLC, because we spend a lot of time and resources doing this linked course thing. Um, but we do feel like it is very worth the effort um, of, of going through all the spreadsheets to make sure, you know, all the students are placed into a CTW that's connected. And so this year, we are also going to be offering a first year seminar in the RLC. So this will be in winter quarter. And so this is another opportunity for students in the RLC to take a course with other students in their RLC. This course will be taught by the faculty member who lives in the RLC. And it's generally a course that's providing students with sort of some nuts and bolts of how to succeed in, in their first year and beyond. Um, you might be thinking, well, why don't we offer it in the fall? There's just a lot going on in the fall because students are still finishing up some of their like orientation activities in the fall quarter. So there just isn't a lot of room to put this, but in the winter quarter, um, you know, this is, this is what we do. And we piloted the program last year, and this is the second year of the pilot. Um, and students who, the data show that students who did take the first year seminar knew about more campus resources, felt more connected to other students. So again, another opportunity that we offer to students to build those connections. And then, as I mentioned, our social programs, you know, mostly come from our community facilitators, but they're socials with food. They sometimes do art projects. 
But overall, the goal is we help students how to maintain their well-being, how to manage stress, you know, how to deal with all the many demands on their time. Uh, we help them learn about campus resources. We help them connect with other students and student organizations. And sometimes it's just to take a break from studying. I mean, we are very much of the mind that you can't just keep going. You need to rest. You need sleep. You need to take care of your body mentally and physically if you are going to do well and if you're going to do well for your four years here at Santa Clara. And this is just, you know, a small um, sort of a uh, description of what we do, but we do many more things than this. Sometimes we, our CFs take students off campus to like a game, like a, a baseball game or a, a basketball game, um, things like that as well. So again, overall, our goal in the RLC system is to provide as many opportunities for students to develop connections as possible. And because this is because the research shows that if students feel connected, they know where the resources are, the more likely they will use them. And so, you know, we know that students will every once in a while face a challenge. That's why we're all here. That's why there's so many staff who live in the RLCs at Santa Clara. Um, and it's, it's to make sure that they feel supported um, so that they can thrive while they're here at Santa Clara. And we feel very proud here at Santa Clara that many of our students do thrive um, and just and choose to stick with us for four years. And I, I believe it's because we put so much intention into their first year to help them develop these connections so that they have the support network that they're going to need um, to complete their four years here. And so that concludes sort of my sort of plan part of the presentation. So we're just so excited to welcome you to campus um, in a few weeks. Uh, please don't hesitate to let us know how we can support your student. Um, and now I will open up the floor to questions. Uh, but before I do that, there is one in the chat. So I'll go ahead and answer that. So the question is, will there be a schedule of the weekly plan, sort of when the social, the study abroad presentations are? And that is yes. So every RLC sends out a weekly newsletter to all of the students who live in that RLC. And that will have that week's programs um, and the location of where in the building the, the program will be held. So um, if your student ever is like, I don't know where the program programs are, uh, please encourage them to read the weekly newsletter that their RLC is sending them because that's where they can find out. And definitely because we have the benefit of having a space, um, we also put up paper flyers um, all throughout the residence halls to remind students of these programs. Um, and we found that that's also a great way to get students to be aware. So again, if your students ever like, I don't know where to go, just tell them, look for the flyers that are posted in your building and open the email that has the newsletter and that's how they'll learn about activities. Um, so another question is, can off students, uh, off campus students join the LSU program? So every student who's a first or second year, definitely a first year gets assigned to an RLC, even if they are a commuter student. And so that student is welcome to attend any of the events. That student is on the mailing list that gets the weekly newsletters. So if your student is commuting um, and they are, you know, want to do these activities, please, please, please encourage them to look at the newsletter that they will get sent. And they are welcome to come to any events, but they are assigned to a specific RLC. So they can't just show up to any RLC. It should be the one that they have been assigned to. Um, and so off-campus students who are commuting can also do the activities. Um, is there a checklist for what to prepare for moving in? Yes, there is. That is on the housing website. Um, there, we also encourage students definitely to contact their, their roommates or suite mates so that you're not bringing multiple sets of things that you might want to share. Um, but there is a checklist, um, and it's, it's different depending on what style dorm you're in. So if you're in a dorm, that's a suite style where the students sort of have their own bathroom, then that might be a different list. Uh, compared to students who are living in one of our more communal style dorms. Um, and so Lori has just shared uh, the helpful checklist. Thank you, Lori. Okay, so next question is, should students be purchasing books before classes? And if so, where do they find that info? So the way that we do books here is um, you can email the professor who is listed on your um, class schedule. You can also go to our bookstore because the bookstore uh, requires the faculty members to tell them what books to order. So if you physically go to the bookstore, 
it will all, and you can, you can find your classes that you're in and also know what books are required that the, the professor has asked the bookstore to bring. I believe you can also do this online through our bookstore's website. Um, and so I think as long as your student knows what classes they're taking and, you know, doesn't, the, the challenge is sometimes students drop classes, so you may not want to buy the books ahead of time, but if you want to be prepared um, or you want to buy the books with them while you're here on campus, um, going to the bookstore is where you can figure all of that out. Um, there were also questions that, okay, questions about so for Casa Italiana, um, it is sweet style living with a kitchen. I don't believe the apartments have dishwashers. So um, you may have to, I'm not, I know that the Villas has it. I'm actually not positive if Casa has um, dishwashers. I'll have to find out, um, or it might be on the website. Um, that question, I don't know, but if there is a kitchen, yeah. So. If, if there are washing machines, they can do pods or liquids. I just don't know if they actually have dishwashers there. Lori, do you know if Casa has dishwashers? I know the Villas does. I know. I was trying to see if uh, Casa had dishwashers. Okay, so um, Lori's going to look that up. About I'm looking. Dishwashers in Casa. Um, for laundry, so every um, building has uh, laundry rooms. So it depends on the, you know, sort of type of building that you're in. So in my building in Finn, I'm in Kira, um, we have a laundry room on every floor. Um, some buildings have like one main laundry room in the basement, but we do this very strategically where depending on how many students are living in that hall, our housing folks will basically calculate like how many students per machine we need. So we need to make sure that that ratio uh, works. So we do try to make sure that there are enough laundry machines, but every building has their laun their own laundry facilities. So that would not, you're, nobody will have to drag their laundry off campus and do it at a laundromat and bring it back. Um, so uh, a question about Thanksgiving week. Yes, so the residence halls are open during Thanksgiving week. There are students, staff who will be around and some professional staff who will be around. It will be very quiet, but it is definitely like we are, there are still some units that are functioning. Our campus safety is definitely still around during um, Thanksgiving week. So if your student is going to be staying during Thanksgiving, there will be people here. Uh, and some of the RLCs will also have like a Thanksgiving program for students who uh, aren't able to make it home. So for instance, in Kira, I host a Thanksgiving lunch for all of our students who don't uh, go home. And so some of the other RLCs um, also have that, or sometimes we combine forces and multiple RLCs will do something together. So please know that there will be the things around during Thanksgiving week if your student is not planning on, on going home. Um, other questions? Uh, I think, so these are, these came from the RSVP. So someone asked, do the students change their dorms every quarter? No, they will stay in the same dorm for the entire school year. Um, if for some reason, you know, it's not working out, um, for them in their current uh, dorm, there is a time where they can request a room change. So that period usually opens up. Um, they'll get information about it. I can't remember off the top of my head what week, but there is an opportunity if they want to, to change their, their dorm if it's not quite working out for them. Any other questions from parents? Uh, okay, so if it's your second year and you want to stay, stay, yes. So if, so the way we do the second year is if your student wants to stay in the same RLC, they will have um, first choice to choose to stay in the same RLC. The only catch is that if they already have a roommate that they know they want to live with again, or, you know, a different roommate in the second year, they can only stay in that RLC if the other roommate is also in the same RLC. So let's say I live in Finn this year in Kira and I want to stay in Kira again next year. I made a friend also in Kira. Then both of us, if we apply to live in Kira again, we would be guaranteed a spot, a spot in Kira. 
if I live here this year and I make a friend in my Spanish class, but my Spanish class friend is not currently living in Cura this year and they live in Loyola, if we wanted to apply together, then we would not be guaranteed a spot in Cura. So that's just how our housing folks do it. It's a logistical like it's insanity how they place all the students. So this is just a system they've devised that works for them to keep the work as minimal, um, you know, as possible. But if your student does want to stay in the same RLC, there are things that they will have to do to guarantee their spot in the same RLC again. Um, and that's, but, but they would be guaranteed to come back. So uh, a question about after the first year. So yes, the way we do the RLCs is even if they come back to the same RLC next year, everyone will have to move all of their things out at the end of the school year. The reason being that over the summer, um, we have a conference services on campus and they actually come in and utilize all of the residence halls. Um, and we, you know, hold conferences for all kinds of folks who want to come use our space on campus. And so students will not be able to store their things in the dorm room, even if they are coming back to the same RLC next year. And we have um, sort of different ways that students can store their things. So, you know, there's um, like, they can rent like sort of like a pod thing. A lot of students will share one and just put a few boxes in there. And so this, this business, what they do is they'll bring these pods and set them in one of the parking lots on campus and your student can just pack all their stuff loaded into this pod. They store them over the summer. And then once it's moving again, the pods will be returned to this parking lot and your student can just go and grab their things um, and move back into the dorm. Any other questions? Either chat or if you want to ask. Okay. If there aren't any other questions, you know, I'm happy to end this a little early and let everybody have some time back, but I thank you so much.